I love waking up every single morning knowing that I'm a genius. Jude Bellingham has chosen Real Madrid. Jude Bellingham plans to dominate Europe for the next 10 years with Real Madrid. Breaking news, Jude Bellingham has chosen Real Madrid. Oh my god, breaking news, Jude Bellingham has chosen Real Madrid. In my honest opinion, I do not believe that Jude Bellingham is overhyped. I actually believe he's one of the most talented players and one of the most and one of the players with the most potential in world football right now. The way he plays football is just so elegant. He's powerful, he's pacey, uh, he's got a left foot, right foot, he's got skills, he's got passing ability, he's got range, he's got everything. We all made fun of Birmingham for retiring his jersey number, but nobody's laughing now. I told you this. I told all of you this. Okay, obviously I would love Jude Bellingham, you would love Jude Bellingham, everybody and their grandma that lives in Manchester that supports the blue side would love Jude Bellingham to come to Manchester City, but it is a pipe dream in my opinion. His dad is a Liverpool fan. And Liverpool was his main target, but they can't afford him. So Real Madrid is the obvious choice. Yes, we have Pep Guardiola. Yes, we have Erling Haaland, but that's Real Madrid for 150 million. Oh my goodness. I made a 15 minute video a while back targeting about 10 different midfielders for Man City for a potential midfielding rebuild. One priority is to make Bernardo Silva love and force him to love the Manchester weather. And by force him, I mean give him a gigantic pay raise. Hopefully Gundogan can extend his contract for another year as well. If one of them goes or both of them goes, Jude Bellingham probably is the best option for Man City, but it's the most unlikely option in my opinion. So many midfielders to choose from. I mean, we can sign Kefren Turam, the French midfielder uh, from Ligue 1. We could sign Gabri Viega for around 35, 30 million euros. We could sign Kovacic for 25 to 30 million euros. He's 28 years old. He's Premier League proven. He's a multiple time Champions League winner. He's got a lot of pedigree and he's a fantastic box to box midfielder. Why would I not want him? I don't want to sell Calvin Phillips. I think he'll come good in the next season. Pep Guardiola's signings obviously take at least one season. Rodri wasn't that good in his first season for all of you that remember. And now best CDM in the world. There's no reason why Calvin Phillips can't improve next year, so I don't want to get rid of him. We can sign Gabri Viego, we can sign Kovacic, and we can sign James Madison. All for probably less than Jude Bellingham. Let me know down in the comments down below, because I'm not sure if any of you feel this, you know, the same way with me, because because I really, really, really like Matters. I really like him, and I hope that he can come to Man City, because if Leicester City get relegated, it's honestly between Leicester and Everton right now, I think there's no hope left for Southampton, in my opinion. Yeah, James Madison is about 26 years old, 25, 26 years old. He could still give us a good five, six years at Manchester City if we can sign him for around 40 million. We did the same thing with Ake. Bournemouth got relegated. We signed Ake, and now it's working out so far. We can do the same thing with James Madison. But I'm going to end my talks with Jude Bellingham there because, like I said, in my opinion, it is a gigantic pipe dream. It's not going to happen. Let's just move on. We have a fantastic squad. We have fantastic midfielders already. We should prioritize signing them and re-signing them and making sure they stay. I saw reports that Luka Modric is injured for around two weeks. He's going to miss the Copa del Rey, I think, semifinal, I think they're in. And I think he's a huge doubt for the first leg against Manchester City in the Champions League at the Bernabeu. What do I think of this? In my humble opinion, that is a huge loss. But at the same time, they still have Vinicius. They still have Benzema. They still put Valverde in the midfield with Tuchemeni. Kamavinga is probably going to play left back as Mendy's out injured. And obviously, Tony Cruz is sensational as well. It's going to sound crazy, and this is going to sound, this is probably going to anger some of you, but if we do lose at the Bernabeu, I hope it's at least, I hope it's just like a one goal difference. I still think we can turn it around, but obviously, the main priority is a defensive masterclass, and hopefully, we can do that and get a draw. 0 0 or 1 1 or 2 2 would be fantastic. We could take it back to the Etihad and work from there. Modric is one of the best midfielders in the world, but he's not the best, in my opinion. He's still one of the greatest midfielders of all time. So I know this guy doesn't have the pedigree of Luka Modric right now, but I still think this guy is sensational. I still think he he can do the business. I still think that even at their best right now, I still think Kevin De Bruyne is the best midfielder in the world. Regardless, we got Fulham in two days. That is the most important game of the season right now because every single game is our most important game. We're still two points behind Arsenal. The title race is not over. If you remember last time, we were dominating that game and then Jao Cancel completely bottled it and gave Fulham a penalty. And we had to risk Erling Holland to come back and score and save the day for us. Great job selling that dive, Kevin De Bruyne. You know what you did. At the end of the day, I, I I would love a player of his caliber to join Man City, but it's just really unlikely, guys. It, I'm just I'm just putting it out there. It's just my honest opinion. It's just really unlikely. Let's focus on Fulham. Thank you so much for watching.